for my third and final arrangement today, I've decided to use a basket. Um, a lot of people um, think of them as Easter baskets, but in Japan, baskets are usually used in the autumn. And they're a wonderful um, container to use. Because of the open weave, they give you all kinds of opportunities to put material inside and outside or even through. This particular one is got a lovely patina of brown on it. Again, I'm carrying the brown through with the autumn theme. It has a very flat bottom, but I'm going to use that bottom in a slightly different way today. So I was trying to also go for something that would allow you to view it from all sides. So it could be used as a centerpiece, not just as a, um, something for a hall table or an entryway. So these are just mini pumpkins from the supermarket. Um, I'm using another Kenzan. This one's a slightly different shape, but it's the same basic idea. And I'm going to be using that to help fix my floral materials in place. To help give this a little bit more balance, I'm just using another pumpkin inside. I chose a white one this time because you can see it. So it provides the contrast and you can actually see the weave of the basket. So it highlights that. And then just for a pop of a slightly different color, I'm just going to add a little apple. So hopefully you'll be able to view this from all sides and it should be nice wherever you're sitting around your holiday table. Um, this one I'm going to start a little bit differently. Normally you would start with the branches and the leaves and the flowers would be sort of the last thing. But because I want to put some down in the center, if I start filling the space up top, it makes it much more difficult for me to put things down low. So I'm actually going to do this sort of in reverse because I'm going to start with some of the floral materials cut short and down in the center. If you're making arrangements at home, you might want to recut the stems of your material in water. You can have a bowl of water and just recut it a little bit and it will help draw water and last a little bit longer. Um, I'm not doing that because of demonstration. It just takes a lot of extra time and so I tend not to do that, but I like to tell people that it's a good thing to do. It will make your material last a bit longer. Cut that a little bit shorter still. As I said, the fun part about having all those openings is it allows you to put materials through as well as just one way or the other. Let's try. Because I want people to have interest all the way around, I'm going to add another one fairly low. These are lovely two-tone spider mum. Um, they actually, they're not dyed. They grow that way. And I think they're just the epitome of fall, and they almost have a kind of glow-in-the-dark green-yellow to them, which is also just kind of an exciting color to work with. For some greenery, I've actually, this is dwarf Nandina, and it's a lovely bush, and it's just a low bush, but it comes, it gets some beautiful fall color on the leaves. Um, the problem is it's so dense you have to remove a lot of the leaves and these little spike things. They'll, this whole thing was just covered in these little, I don't know what they are, they're not even a branch. They're like a, a leaf um, spindle, I guess. But the beauty of this too is it, again, it's just, if you, once you take away a lot of the material, you're left with this delicate line and this sense of movement and it's stuck. There we go. This is a bigger branch and I've just taken 
some pieces off this. This was one tiny little shoot like this. Um, so there's lots of possibilities. This is obviously too big if I put it in like this, but if I look at the various lines on this, I can determine where I might want to cut it down and make it a little bit thinner. I have to come back to that one. That's a little thick. Let's see. I'm going to cut this stem on a diagonal because it, thicker, woodier stems will fit better on the Kenzan. If they're at an angle, it allows more needles to bite. Flowers you generally cut straight across because it's a softer stem and they need the spines to go straight up. So that's what I'm doing there. I'll leave that for the moment and I wanted to add a little bit more contrast color. So I'm going back to the purple. Um, these are much smaller because these are so big and so dominant. I wanted something that was a smaller, uh, more delicate shape. And I'm going to sort of break this down to create several different things from one large stem. Let's go. Okay. Oh, three's too dominant, so I'm going to reduce the size of this down if I can get it back out again. <laughs> there we go. I think that might just work better with two. A slightly longer one. Let's see if I can get a little bit more interest on this side. But at this point, I've eliminated the option of putting my hand back down the center. So I'm going to have to work with it in a different manner. So there's a, a seasonal centerpiece using a basket. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching me do the demonstration and that you learned something and that you'll go home and try it a little bit yourself. Um, the Ichio School is a very small school in San Diego, but it's very large on the east coast of the United States. Um, with the advent of the current pandemic, I've actually been doing Zoom workshops with the Iomoto, the head of the school, twice a month, which has been a really exciting new change for us. Um, Ikebana International is very active in San Diego, and I've been a member and a participant for many, many years. Um, and hopefully we'll get back to doing our 
regular shows in Balboa Park soon.